Hello everyone, Ev here, Tech Motorsports, and we're picking up on part two of the uh, E30 um, S65 swap in E30. So uh, where I left off last time, we were going to end up, uh, well, I was going to end up uh, getting the uh, cross member going. Um, and right now I fiddled with this a little bit more and I pretty much have it right where I need to have it. So I have the engine level, um, both from the front to rear and also um, from right to left, make sure it's nice and level. And um, I didn't think I mentioned this before, but I do have my center mark on the motor. Um, what I've got is in between the actual uh, engine rails, it's 27 inches. Uh, so split that right in half, 13 and a half. So every time I end up moving something, well, technically when I get ready to build the, uh, actually tack weld the uh, mounts in place, that's when uh, that marking will come into play to make sure I have the engine pretty much centered in the engine bay. Um, so, so yeah, so I've got, this pretty much set up um i can go a little bit more higher um only because or i can but right now i'm limited because there is a solenoid inside of the transmission that is technically hitting the uh, the bottom of the chassis so i think that section i will be cutting out and making room for that um so that would be part of maybe how the exhaust runs as well but right now um she is to the point to where She's level in the situation because I could always cut, cut, uh, cut the tack welds off of the motor mounts and bring them up a little bit in case I need, you know, I want to raise the motor up if it's, if it's too low. That is just one thing that, uh, that um, we're going to try to do is trying to get the, the engine low enough so that way the actual intake uh, does not interfere with the hood clearance. And that's one of the um, other priorities that we're trying to, to, uh, to do here. So. We will see if it doesn't work and if it's too low, then we will have to look at uh, version two of the hood clearance, which is going in and I'll probably raise the engine up a little bit more higher. And then what I'll end up doing is then we'll look at uh, version two, which would be cutting the intake and shorten it. And option three for that would we just remove the air box and put velocity stacks on there. So that's. We do have options. Um, we'd like to stick with the first one, which is what I'm working on now. But we'll see where it uh, where it um, where it all ends up. So uh, yeah, so let's take a look at the cross member and go from there. All right, so here's the cross member. I already got it uh, cut. Uh, so this is the section that is going to be technically uh, no longer used, and then it's gonna leave me with the end caps here. So I've already uh, drawn out uh, my end caps for this right here. Um, so as I'm sitting there looking, trying to kind of uh, get a game plan of what's going on. And I think I've, I think this is going to work really well. I'm going to try it. If it doesn't uh, pan out, then I could always get another cross member. But what I'm going to end up doing is so that I could end up utilizing the actual motor mounts. These are the E90, uh, the S65 uh, motor mounts. I'm going to use these because these are really good ones. I'm going to reuse, well, I'm going to try to use these. Um, but the way it's sitting now with the, uh, the mounting on top, there's not enough clearance between the actual the amount or the the motor mount itself and the uh, the headers so what i'm going to end up doing is i'm going to be cutting this off and i'm going to reverse it so that way the motor mount sits down here further so that should give me enough clearance for the headers and that way we could actually get a wrench on here um and uh tighten them and remove them whenever you know that has to happen so that's that's going to be my next plan so uh i will end up cutting one of these just to see how it works and see if i'm able to get the good clearance and um and here is the template of my uh of the engine three quarters tubings that i'm going to end up using to um uh, to build and attach this together and then at that point this will also attach uh my uh, steering rack um, so this will push the steering rack forward of the car, forward of the engine. So um, we have taken consideration on the length of the shaft and hopefully it's not bad to where it's going to um, mess up the steering and the geom geometry. It will affect it, but hopefully it, it won't be uh, bad, but won't get there until I get this done, get the engine sitting in there and then attach in the actual um, steering rack. So uh, that's down the road a little bit further. So. It's a little tough because as I'm down there, I'm looking at everything. And as I stated before, um, 
when you go in and you do one item, it's going to affect the next item. If you think you're gonna, it's gonna go here and everything else is gonna clear, uh, it's not gonna work. But that's what I'm doing, I'm just taking it one step at a time and keeping mindful of all the other items. When I do one thing, it could affect the other. So, uh, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do is cut the in, cut these one of these pieces off, kind of figure out a way just to put a, a quick little template on it, tack weld it, and bolt it up on the car and see where it, uh, where it lies. All right, here are the cross member ends. The end caps have been welded on. I used, uh, I was gonna end up using one eighth, but I decided to go with uh, a quarter. So I have them on both. That is done. Also removed the uh, actual OEM section of the, uh, um, where the motor mount would go on the uh, E30. I removed that because I'm gonna do something a little bit different so I could still end up utilizing the cross member uh so the one and three quarter tubing here it is um got that bent and uh, also got it uh grinded uh, down uh, so that way um, it's a nice snug fit so there is a lot of walking back and forth back and forth from the car to here from the car to here I'm trying to keep all my grindings and all the mess here instead of inside the in, inside the shop um so yeah so i got a nice and snug fit um I have my center line on the actual pipe itself or the cross member and then I have the center line also on the oil pan as well uh, so that way when I went back and forth um, um, make sure I got it in the right spot also went ahead and orientated my driver side and passenger side because there was at one point where I was just grabbed it real quick I put it up there and I thought I messed up my uh, my grind and I had it just backwards so uh, so yeah um, I had to go to a to a friend's to, to get this done. Um, I don't have a, a tube vendor here yet. So um, so yeah, so I had to get that done. That's what it took a little bit, and uh, and yeah, um, right now I'm just gonna put the stuff back in there and tack this puppy in place, and uh, hope all goes well. All right, and uh, there she is. It uh, I went ahead and got it tack welded and then got it in a good situation and then in the areas that i was able to weld uh really good i went ahead and got that done uh to minimize from the um uh, the cross member uh twisting from the heat um so once i got it all done um took it down welded all the way around it threw it back up there real quick bolted it on and she she did go on smoothly and uh so i bolted it down then i ended up grabbing my um my air gun and cooled the whole um, piping and the brackets down, uh, so that way it, it would be cool and the um, it would minimize any of the uh, twisting or um, sort from the actual heat itself. So um, the next step is, or not the next step, but the other thing that I was what I was going to end up doing, which I have two things I got to end up doing now, just to verify and to make sure I have marking points. Which I've stated that my markings here for the center on the pipe is here, and that is uh, in the center of the oil pan and the actual cross member now because that's going to come into play when i install and do the brackets for the rack and pinion so the next thing is once i get the rack and pinion is i got to make sure i have enough room for the actual steering shaft to go from the actual rack and pinion all the way to the steering shaft itself so my i got my motor mounts uh this is the ones we're going to reuse these motor mounts um and it's pretty much going to go here but i also have to make uh keep in mind where the actual rack and pinion is going to lay so right now i'm going to try to get those positioned make sure i have it mark it and make sure that uh, none of these are in its way and or i have to cut them back off but the plan with uh the motor mount is i am going to it's going to mount here and i'm going to end up creating a bracket underneath and welding it from here and on the back side and it's going to go up this way as well and it's going to attach to the tube itself that way the uh the bracket itself for the motor mount is sturdy and also I'm, I'm going to do it at a quarter inch deal because if I end up doing it at, at the one eighth, which is pretty much the same of uh, what the OEMs as anybody knows and if they run BMWs, those will crack because of the uh, of the actual the locking or the uh, location pin and then the actual bolt. So I'm going to end up doing it at a quarter steel. So might as well just get it knocked, knocked on a little bit more tougher, a little bit more weight, but at the end of the road, it's going to be the best thing for it. So, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get that going. So rack and pinion, put it in the right spot and then check to see where my motor mounts are going to go. And, um, I don't know. Um, oh, and, uh, I already got my, uh, my engine plates here already done 
on both sides so i already got those mounted uh, so that way when i get the engine mounts and rack and pinion in place then i can start uh, working on the actual motor mount bracket itself so uh so yay okay so got the cross member pretty much almost done uh here she is so got my rack and pinion brackets in place now uh so now it's going to be time to uh get it in there and uh start um working on the actual motor mount brackets for the cross member um, once i can get that done then it's going to be uh, making sure that my motor is still where i need it to be i've been checking it on off and on and um engine start actually making the um the engine uh, the engine bracket so uh yep let's uh gonna go ahead and uh, buff this up here real quick all right so uh there she is she's uh bolted in um so to get me to where I, I, I got it bolted in, there was, uh, I pretty much started from, from a clean slate, all my markings here from the center and everything. So what I ended up doing is I cleaned the, the tubing off with the previous markings that I had uh, to get the tube uh, where I needed to go. Um, so I ended up uh, taking um, the actual bolt that goes for the lower control arm, the knuckle. I took that section there, measured it, found my middle mark on the tubing, and then on the actual rack itself, what I ended up doing is I took the, uh, I got the, the center of the actual mounting bolts of the steering rack and I found my, my middle marking and I also marked that as well. I don't know if you could end up seeing it, but I, so I got my marking on my rack and I got my marking on the actual um, cross member now. So it just took a little bit of getting it in place, um, getting enough clearance between the actual pinion, uh, the pinion, um, the rack and pinion and the actual cross member which i have one eighth of a uh, one eighth of an inch of a gap uh which that's a that's pretty good you know the closer i uh, just i gotta deal with that header there's there's header clearance that i was dealing with so i was trying to keep that uh, mindful um so so yeah so it was a little bit of a of of, a, of an issue trying to get this thing stationary and so i could tack it i tried using so many different things straps bungee cords try to get it in place and finally what i ended up doing was i took my floor jack lowered the car down and i put some um, uh, some two by fours and down underneath and i was able to get it right on where i needed it to go and it just took a lot of finesse and going back and forth to try to make sure i had uh, my measurements in the right spot because all my markings that I had which made it a tad bit difficult because it was on the floor so my minimum my space underneath was a little bit tougher but I was able to uh to get it and um and yeah so I was able to uh, get the upper ones mounted in and then I went down and took it down uh, finished welding all the way uh, that all the way up um and then I went through and bent and got the lower section of the of the uh, bracket for the string rack uh, bent and then um, welded in place as well so uh so she fits nice and snug i got the clearance like i said uh between the actual cross member and the rack and pinion um and i got my low, my suspension in place just trying to make sure that my steering mechanism isn't too far out and it seems to be actually pretty darn good so uh so yeah um the next step what i'll be working on is the actual motor mount bracket on the cross member itself. Um, I have a E46 M3, which is the same for an E90 motor mount here. And I'm gonna use the OEM mount. And the reason why I'm gonna use the OEM mount is because the OEM mount is a little bit more uh, bigger diameter than the ones I'm gonna be using, which are the uh, the Vibrotex uh, techniques. So. They're a little bit uh, smaller in diameter, and this one is shorter than this one. So I called GR and spoke to him a little bit and let him know that this is what we're gonna go with. And if he ever changes his mind and he doesn't go with these and he puts OEM, that he has to be mindful that this, now I'm only speaking now because I haven't got to that point yet, um, is the hood clearance between the uh, the intake um, the plenum and then the hood itself that if he went back to an OEM one that uh, it could cause an issue depending on where we're at when we get to that point. 
just stating that now. Um, but also what I wanted to do is just in case you ever did, the diameter, the diameter is bigger. So I want to make sure that the bracket that I make is going to be for an OEM one. And that way, whichever one you get, if it's smaller, it's going to, it's not going to make a difference. So, uh, so yeah, so that's what I'm doing now. And, uh, I'm going to start working on that. So let's, uh, keep plugging away. Okay. So, uh, got the motor mount brackets in place or welded in place, uh, completely through. So, um, as you can see, uh, she sits there nice and good. There's plenty of room in the, uh, in the back. Uh, so, so yeah, so both sides are done and, uh, I will show a little bit more in depth of the cross member here a little bit later uh, once I get it uh, all the way down. Um, but yeah, so that's in there. So I've already started mocking up my motor mount um, bracket um, and um, here she is right here. Uh, so of course it lays back from the back this way. So uh, the, this section of course goes towards the front and here's the uh, my other piece here which is uh, nicely formed already and uh, getting ready to uh, to go and weld this sucker in place uh, so uh, yeah a lot of uh, a lot of grinding getting it, getting it to form correctly get a good uh, tight seal all the way around so when I weld it's uh, nice and snug um, so uh, so yeah and uh, if you haven't noticed yet and this is what I've done um, I have a spacer between the actual cross member and the uh, in the frame itself and the reason is that there's a spacer that's available that we could lower the whole subframe down so what i ended up doing is when i had it normally and I had it attached the hood wouldn't close so uh the hood clearance was shy which i i kind of already knew it i mean by looking at how it tapered down into the uh, front of the hood um but i had that already in the back of my mind that we could end up using that and you know dropping it down they use the spacers for uh m62s m60s installation on the e30s and uh, a couple of the different ones that way it uh, to give you a little bit more clearance so um so yeah so i've got that in place and with that spacer in place now i have the hood clearance so uh let's take a look at that real quick uh before i start uh tacking this uh together okay so here we are and just gonna push down on the hood just a tad bit And pretty much he's right there, of course. I can't really tell if it's completely down and everything, but at this point where it being like that, I push it all the way down and I could feel it rubbing just a tad bit. Um, but I also have the engine setting up a little higher on the cross member than normal. Uh, so I know that's gonna give me the extra clearance uh, that we end up needing. So, uh, so, so yeah, um, so we are being mindful on how low it sits. So. Once I get the suspension and get the wheels down and get it down underneath, and I think I'm just going to grab the front bumper and install the front bumper. Uh, so that way I can see exactly how much, how low it really sits to the ground. Um, the suspension is an E36 uh, suspension up front. So what I had to end up doing is I had to drill the uh, strut tower. Um, the strut tower had to drill the hose for, for the, uh, for the, for the E36. So, um, it, it doesn't make a difference. We're going to put, we're, we're going to plate it anyways, um, for the extra additional weight. And, um, and yes, we, so we got, I got that done. So I have that in place. So should be able to hopefully here soon, uh, weld those brackets in place, mount it in on there and, um, put the wheels on and, uh, kind of see how, 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 how low the engine really sets. And that's going to dictate us if we're going to go back up and remove the spacers. A lot of stuff. Like I said before, one thing will affect the other and so on and so on. So, uh, so that's where we're at now. And, um, and yeah, so let's, uh, get that, uh, motor mount bracket going. All right. So before I get to the, uh, to the welding part, uh, so here's the little cups, uh, that I made. And, um, so I just took a, um, inch and a half, uh, tubing and cut that down. And I took my flat bar here. Um, I used a quarter inch. And uh, what I ended up doing is uh, to get the nice circular to make it so much more easier for me instead of cutting and grinding down, I took uh, a hole saw and uh, I used uh, inch and three quarters and just uh, took my time and went through the, uh, the quarter inch steel and got me a nice, perfectly rounded uh, uh, bottom section. So all I had to do is just grind just a tad bit 
and then uh, just make a little slot on both ends so that way when I weld I weld into the uh, into the both pieces so so yeah so that's how I got to that piece um, and of course here is the actual piece itself now I left it like this because um, I am going to cut it uh, once I get everything all welded in place I wanted to have all that done so it's going to be down at an angle to make it much more easier to get a nut and a wrench in there um, but I just cut it a certain uh, size and I did is just did it that way so that way I, I made sure I had enough uh, movement up and up and down you know, so I figured if I needed to cut it off and grind it down I could end up doing that so um, just a little bit more work but still um, if I messed up or do whatever I had to start all over again so this way it gives me uh, a better chance uh, for error so uh, so yeah so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this uh, uh, welded all together okay so final product there it is uh, so she's completely all welded together and uh, also went ahead and cut the uh, the slant on my little cup there where it actually bolts onto the motor mount yes the motor mount itself uh, so yeah so she's all done and uh, uh, the reason why I did that was just to make sure I gave myself plenty of room if I needed to move these bars up or down in um, when I was uh, getting everything all cut down and everything so that gave me enough room um, and gave me some 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 slack up top that way I was able to cut the angle down uh, but yeah she's uh, pretty much all said and done I am going to tweak the plate a little bit. Um, once I get it going, I'm going to kind of cut it to make it just a tad bit lighter. But then again, you know, I'm not going to go too far off. That way I don't weaken it. But, uh, you know, up here on top, I'm probably going to cut a section out. Some here towards the bottom, just a little bit. Um, but yeah, that should be it for the driver side. Got to work on the passenger side one now. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get uh, going with that. Okay, so now both mount, both motor mounts are done and uh, they are installed. So I got everything pretty much installed, uh, the rack and pinion, the cross member, and the, uh, the motor mounts with the actual engine, mount, uh, engine brackets are already installed. So everything seems to be going pretty nice. I went ahead and got uh, uh, the suspension attached as well with the lower control arms, uh, the um, MRT uh, engineering control arms. So now um, I did check the rack and pinion uh, yoke for the steering shaft and uh, yeah I need a little bit more clearance out of there so I will have to deal with that at a later point um, no big deal at this point there's a couple different ways we could go about that but uh, so yes that is one thing that I have to add to my uh, still or keep on my to-do list um, so that'll be one item um, that I take care of here down the road uh, the next step that I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to throw some rotors on it um, just so I could uh, get, get the gap uh, between the actual wheel, put the wheel on, and uh, I'm going to lower it so I can just kind of take a look underneath. I do not have the transmission mount as that is coming up next uh, to start building uh, that one. So, uh, so yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's take a look underneath on the, uh, on the actual motor mounts and stuff. All right, so here is the passenger side. Uh, motor mount and uh, nice uh, beefy like I was like I think I stated before um, this is thin wall originally it's probably one eighth and um, they have um, uh, have cracked in the past between the actual nut and the uh, the locating pin so what I end up doing is I would have had beefed it up I did uh, one quarter inch steel uh, so that thing should not be cracking and then we just go to the bottom and um, and look at the driver's side one so I uh, can't really say there's not much light but you can see how it curves around and then you can see the rack and pinion up there how close and if you look you can see one of my markings to where that in that area is where I'm gonna have to create a little bit more space for the actual yoke for the steering column but that uh, like I stated before that's gonna be something uh, a little bit uh, down the road so uh, so yeah so there is uh, that section of that and uh, there's the rack and pinion with the actual cross member and the only other thing that I will have to do to the cross member is when I get to that point is there is a spacer that goes between here that comes with the uh, MRT engineering kit um, I have to still um, add that and weld that into place so that is uh, that is a little bit later I don't have to worry about that right now uh, but yeah there's uh, there's just a glimpse of it from underneath there she is she's on the ground she looks good 
the engine is mounted to the car, to the chassis. Um, so I couldn't resist myself. I had to throw my arcades on there. Uh, these are from my champ car, uh, 17 by nines with 255 40 series tires on there. She looks, baby, ah, oh, cannot wait until this car is done. Gosh, too bad I'm just starting and it's a long ways before we get to that point. But anyways, Let's do a quick little summary of uh, stuff that I could have missed in previous videos and just go through and do a quick little summary of where where I'm at now. Um, so at the beginning of all this, there was uh, two priorities that we wanted to clarify and we wanted to make sure we worked around. Uh, AC being one of them to make sure that we kept the EVAP system and the heater intact. So that minimized me cutting into the firewall. The other thing, priority number two, was the hood clearance. Uh, we did not want to cut into the hood. We did not want that bubble shape on the hood, so we had to keep the OEM style hood. Um, so we technically lowered the engine down to give us uh, the clearance that we needed. Now, to keep going on that, um, we are going to be putting a skid plate regardless uh, on how low the engine is, that will be done. Um, and the other thing too is once I got all of this taken care of and the engine mounted in place i was able to get more clearance by adding a spacer between the chassis and the subframe which gave me plenty of clearance between the hood and the actual planet itself um, so we're probably going to go that route to keep it that way i do need a, uh, to get that taken care of and that's the way we're going to go so i can build the transmission mounts in the back uh, so the cross member itself um, so once we got it's situated and all in there, um, motor sitting right where it needed to go, engine's far back, I had to remove the EGR, uh, EGR solenoids in the back to give me about an inch and a half, maybe two inches of clearance to get the engine back. So once I got all that said and done, I went in and I was happy where it was sitting, uh, installed the motor mount on, oh, sorry, the cross member. And then of course the cross member, which I already knew, it was gonna hit the oil pan. So priority number three then came up, uh, no cutting of the oil pan. Um, we have to use the OEM oil pan. So no dry sump, dang it, it would've made my job a little bit easier. Uh, so we're not using no dry sump, we're keeping the OEM oil pan. So I had to modify the cross member. So it led me to the direction that I went. So two versions that we were gonna end up using also to install the engine. Uh, engine version one was going to mount it to the chassis rail of the engine bay, and version two was going to be using the cross member to do the, uh, the holding of the engine itself. So having to modify it, we end up going the uh, cross member route. So end up uh, getting that taken care of. In the interim, um, I had to remove the stock location of the bracket for the motor mount. Um, because it will not clear the header itself once I put the motor mount. Now I wanted to utilize an OEM motor mount. So that's what I ended up doing. I cut the standard um, bracket off, lowered it down, and also in the interim I beefed it up and used a quarter steel instead of the 1.8. That way um, it is technically already um, reinforced, so there should be no issues of that section cracking like the normal E36, E46 have done in the past. So that's been said and done uh, by lowering it and gave me plenty of room for the motor mount and the uh, header and to create the actual uh, the motor mount brackets themselves. So, um, so yeah, so that pretty much got me all laid out to where I'm at now. Um, I was able to install the suspension. Uh, that way I made sure I was clearing everything. There is one little small issue is the MRT suspension. There's the, a little section of the bracket that, um, that holds the, uh, the uh, front tab. Um, there's a little bracket in it that I'm probably gonna have to cut off because it is heading the, uh, the actual exhaust itself. So, uh, and I had to cut the flange off no matter what, we're going to be using V-bands anyway, so we'll, we'll take care of that for the exhaust. Um, and by doing and putting the suspension on, we're using E36 suspension, so he's got the knuckle and the actual suspension for the E36. And of course, the E36 hat does not fit the E30, so I had to drill the tower. Um, no worries about that. We're going to reinforce the tower. That was our plan to begin with, so we're going to go ahead and uh, reinforce all that um, and, uh, yeah, make it, make it strong. Um, so... Uh, so I think that pretty much summarizes pretty much where I've gotten, where I've 
where it got me to this point. Um, she is sitting right where she's at. I think we have the hood clearance taken care of. We have the firewall taken care of. Um, there is going to be some modification having to do to the AC system right here. Um, and the same thing with the actual radiator. So uh, that's already been kind of test fitted. I know what I need to do and I will get the clearance for that. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so now that the engine is technically in its spot where it's going to be and I need to work on the transmission mount and that is going to be the start of part three, uh, the transmission mount. So that pretty much will end part two. Um, and like always, guys, I thank you for watching. Thank you for hanging in there. Please help the channel out. Um, by doing that, you got to hit the likes and subscribe button. And uh, hope to see you in part three.